Hi, my name is Leo Hand. I've been a football coach for 42 years. I started coaching in upstate New York. I've also coached in California. I've coached in New Mexico. And I've, the past 10 years, I've been a coach in the state of Texas. I've coached as a defensive coordinator at four and five A schools. And today, I'm here to talk to you about the double eagle, double flex defense, which is kind of an unusual type of defense and I think there's some information here that may be of value to all coaches. In this segment, we're going to cover the linebacker and secondary reads, reactions, and responsibilities of the double eagle, double flex defense. The stud linebacker will line up hugging the tight end very closely. He'll kind of point his butt towards the about a 45 degree angle out. And his job is basically to jam and to cover the tight end. The two running backs, or I'm sorry, the two linebackers, Whip and Rover, are responsible against pass to cover the two running backs. And basically, they're the primary contained players. They have no inside responsibilities as far as gaps. These are all covered by our five in the trench players. The Rover is the adjuster to an ace back formation. Whip will always remain in the box. Now, some people may want to take him out of the box against an empty formation where there are no running backs, the only person in the backfield is a quarterback. We prefer to send the house and rush six against five blockers against an empty formation. So he will always, in our scheme anyways, remain in the box. That may vary uh, depending on a coach's personal preference. Free safety is going to line, oh, the linebackers I didn't mention, line up about four and a half to five yards. The deeper we can line them up, the better we're going to be. And they'll adjust their alignment slightly. For example, again, if the weak backs, if the backs went over to this side, he'd move just slightly to this side, he'd move a little bit wider. Uh, if they were go to this side, he'd move over probably as far as the A gap, and he'd move probably to the outside shade of the tackle. So they'll vary just a little bit. Basically, we want them about four or five yards on the outside shoulder of the tackle or the inside shoulder of the tackle on an I formation. Now, <clears throat> our free safety, it'll depend upon the situation, but norm, his normal def, depth is about seven yards. In an obvious pass situation, he may, go, he may go back as far as 15 yards, but in a normal situation, run pass situation, he's gonna be about seven yards. Hopefully that the, the stud will be able to funnel uh, the tight end into the free safety, and if we have a a detached receiver, for example, we have a, uh, a, a, an ace back formation. Hopefully that the rover would be able to funnel into the free safety also. So it doesn't always occur. Uh, we have a boundary corner, which is our second best cover corner. And he's responsible for covering number one to his side. But again, if we have a twin formation where the flanker would be over here, okay, He'd be covering number two in the field corner, who's our best uh, cover corner, would be covering number one. Now, again, so much in football depends upon the uh, ability of the personnel, not so much on the X and O. The X and O's are very insignificant when it comes to football. The main thing is putting this guy and this guy and all these guys here in positions where they're capable of doing their job. The one thing you don't want to ever do to a football player is put him in a position that he's unable to perform or asking him to do something he's unable to do. You want him to put him in the best possible situation to develop the best confidence in him so that when he goes into the game he feels good about himself, he feels good about what he has to do. There's no confusion because anytime you have a confused football player, he's not going to be aggressive and when you're not playing aggressive defense, you're not going to be very effective. Okay, this is just a short uh, PowerPoint uh, presentation of our basic responsibilities for our, our inside linebackers, our uh, whip, our rover, and also our outside backer, our stud backer. This is a drill that we do every day. We're going to see it done, demonstrated on the field, but I just kind of want to go over it before we begin here on the field demonstration. Basically, the black squares are barrels that we use. We use two live guards because we want our uh, whip and our rover 
to be able to read the guards. When we originally started with his defense, we had our uh, rover and whip shuffle first and then fulfill their responsibilities. Again, they have no inside uh, responsibilities, no gap responsibilities. They are basically downhill runners, uh, pursuing inside out when flow goes away or primary contain when flow goes towards them. Stud again is primarily responsible for covering the tight end man to man and also helping to secure the D gap and helping the whip a little bit with outside containment after he's certain that the tight end is not releasing for a pass, that he is in fact blocking them. So in this we just kind of, I, and I do it myself, I, I play quarterback here and I sprint out and the whip better be able to contain a 65 year old man as he's running. If he's not, we probably need a new whip linebacker. Uh, Rover should be able to see the guards. They should be able to see both guards out of their periphery. He's going to come downhill and then he's going to shuffle down the line of scrimmage. He should be able to pursue the ball inside out. Sometimes I cut back in here and he should be able to, to latch on to me. Sometimes we do this without the stud. Sometimes we involve him in this drill. Sometimes the, the guy who coaches him uh, prefers to do it by himself and, and that's fine too. Depends what we're working on. Sometimes we're working on covering a, a wide out with him so that he wouldn't be involved in this drill. This is something that I do every day as the linebacker coach. This is just the opposite direction. Rover becomes primary contained. Uh, whip runs downhill. and We don't use these guys as live blockers very often. Sometimes we, we use a shield and he'll rip through the shield and then he'll pursue downside, down, down the line trying to keep his shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage so that when a cutback does occur, <laughs> he's in good position to play it. Now, this is a situation where we've got a guard pull. We want our rover to come down, or I'm sorry, our stud to come down and wrong arm the trapper. This would be a live thing. We want to force it inside. Now, we assume that the ball carrier is going to be forced to bounce the play outside because the stud should be able to, and it's a little harder for the stud than it is for the ends, but he should be able to wrong arm the first pulling lineman in a counter tray, which would be the guard. And this should jam up the tackle who would also be pulling in a counter tray. And so we want to make sure that we spill the play out into the whip linebacker who is primarily for containment and for the bounce off for the, the running back. The end here would be responsible for the uh, the quarterback on this. Uh, I'll give an opposite direction here. When we get on the field you see sometimes that this guy might bite on this and not read the guard pulling. Uh, but it's been my experience that both the, the, the rover and the whip after a lot of repetitions are able to do this and read the guards and read backfield flow without getting tangled up uh, as far as making mistakes and scraping off here, but when we first start out we're going to see a lot of this uh, rover scraping off following the quarterback rather than realizing that the guard is going to be uh, the one that's going to determine where the point of attack is. We've got the same thing here, just the opposite way. We've got to make sure though when we do this drill if the stud is involved that he is in fact covering this tight end because a lot of times I'll pull the ball, I, I, I do use a football in this drill, and now I'll throw it downfield and he better be covering this guy. Uh, even though that we've got this sort of action here with our guard. Because sometimes uh, teams will do that and they'll pull both linemen and they'll give a naked boot. And sometimes our uh, end may make a mistake and run down the heel line. And he doesn't cover this and they've got a big play when that occurs. Okay. This is uh, a situation here now. I'll simulate and they know my code here. When I come straight down the line rather than belly and back, they know that I'm, I'm simulating speed option. So that when we get this now, the stud is responsible because we'll give it this where the uh, tight end will block down on the barrel. He knows now that he's going to squeeze inside, get his butt into the hole here, and then he's going to attack the quarterback. He's going to attack his uh, downfield shoulder, the pitch arm here. He's going to make a tie tackle because if we get a low tackle here, the quarterback is still able to pitch. We don't want that to occur. Now we've got the whip coming outside. He's responsible for pitch. And when we do this drill, he's going to yell, pitch, 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 pitch. Okay. Rover's going to come down the line. Okay. And he's going to make sure that there's no 
seams in here inside out so that if the quarterback tries to sneak through, he's got that taken care of. This is just the weak option, uh, speed option to the weak side. Again, Rover's got pitch. We don't have an end here, but he would be attacking the pitch arm of the quarterback, high tackle. We should make sure the stud is, is uh, covering the tight end and the whip is pursuing inside out. A lot of times I'll, I'll sneak the ball up real quick here. The whip better be able to uh, wrap around a 65-year-old man when that occurs. <clears throat> okay, this uh, is a situation here where I'm simulating an off-tackle play. They know that when I give this, that we're, I'm simulating an off-tackle play. It could either be an off-tackle power, it could be a stretch or whatever. In this case, it'd be an off-tackle power. Stud, I just want to make sure that he's closing inside tight to the block of the tight end so that whoever is going to block him, whether it's a pulling lineman or a fullback or whomever, that he's closed this thing down, okay, and he's attacking whatever the block, whoever the blocker is with his outside shoulder, wrong arming it, okay, bouncing it outside into the whip. So we should get a, a scrape off here, okay, and uh, inside out fill by the rover down the line. Doing the same thing now to the weak side and they should get the same read. Uh, primary contain, inside out pursue, okay, covering the tight end because he's releasing. Pass, okay, basically when we do that, both rover and whip will point, okay, at uh, the, the, the running backs who aren't even there, but they'll point and go, you know, back, 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 pass, 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 pass. And their responsibility because our primary uh, coverage is cover one, is to cover the running backs one-on-one, -on -one, okay? And the stud should be trying to funnel uh, the, the, uh, the tight end to the inside. I, I, I've drawn this so it looks like he's got a good outside release, but this shouldn't really occur. Uh, the stud should be able to jam him and force him inside here, and we should get a good fun inside funnel into the free safety. This is a trap, and when we do this, okay, this is kind of a special thing that we first start out just trying to do the basic things that we've just shown, but eventually we've got to get in where, they re where they're reading trap. And this is a tough read for the uh, rover and the whip. When this occurs here, when we get the tackle coming down, 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 down here, this uh, center would be blocking away. The rover's got to fill, okay, this a gap here, which means he's going to wrong arm the tackle. He's going to do it with his outside shoulder. This is the only time that they don't have primary control on these, these trap plays. Okay, we should have our Ted, our flex player, coming down and wrong arming this pulling guard. We should have this whip wrong arming, in other words, attacking the tackle's block with his outside uh, forearm rip, okay, securing this B gap. Ted should secure the A gap coming down, closing it. He should secure this B gap. And we've got an end here who should be securing the C gap should the trap break that far outside, which it shouldn't. And if uh, the, tra uh, the, the fullback or whoever with the trap, the whoever the back receiving the ball would be, it shouldn't break out to the weak side either because we've got this end who's jetting across and then closing inside. And we should have that uh, secured this uh, B gap here and there shouldn't be anything breaking any wider out here if we do uh, uh, we've done a good job in here and the free safety should be able to fill in the alley on that this is just uh, the trap to the other side got the same thing okay attacking the tackle with the uh, outside forearm okay sec whip securing uh, the uh, A gap here <coughs> and it should be a lot uh, a lot easier for him because, you know, he's uh, he's got a little bit better angle of securing it than the rover did here, because the rover is, you know, it's just basic alignment. Okay, this linebacker we call Stud. Okay, his job is to cover the tight end man to man and help secure the outside, but this guy is actually responsible for containment. This is our whip linebacker and this is our rover right over here. He's the adjuster to ace-back formations. This guy against a shotgun team will always go towards the ace-back. Now, 
we have to synchronize that with the free safety and we'll talk about that later okay now we're going to do a little bit of drill here and I'm going to be the quarterback here okay and what we're going to do is we're going to roll out one way or another these guys are going to take one step forward this is a drill we do every day and what they're going to do is they're going to take one step forward these guys have got a scrape okay if I go this way this linebacker the whip linebacker has got to come outside he's got to contain me that's his job okay if and this guy linebacker here the rover linebacker is going to come downhill he's going to play inside out on me he's going to make sure that I don't get a cutback okay if you are blocked then you're going to control the outside shoulder and you're going to help a little bit on containment get just a little bit tighter here okay so this is going to be your job if he blocks down if he blocks on this the strong end here if he blocks down you're going to close tight right in here and look for a fullback or a pulling lineman which would probably be a guard okay so that's your responsibility okay we got what we're doing here okay come on back come on back come on back okay you guys are going to take one step forward okay that's all you're going to take huh any foot any foot okay and what you're going to do is release outside okay ready break let's go come on, come on, come on. there you go okay now I'm going to help you guys I'm going to roll to the left okay so you're going to come downhill you're going to contain huh <laughs> my left <laughs> okay here we go okay ready go okay now you're gonna run as fast as you can because you got to contain me uh -huh. let's do this one more time one more time okay okay get a little bit wider a little bit wider there we go ready go come on, come on. there you go there we go keep outside on me you coming downhill making sure that I don't get a cut back on you okay now did you get a release downfield okay we want to get a release downfield because you got a job of covering him because if I were to roll out and throw back you got to cover that guy okay one more time one more time make sure we get a good release outside okay get your feet a little bit more a little more parallel get a little, a little closer base there get your hands up so that you're really going to get a jam on that dude there we go ready go <laughs> that's it that's it that's it good 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 excellent okay now the better you can jam him the better we're going to be defensively so if you can jam him keep him on the line of scrimmage that's a great job okay here you go come on back come on back okay okay we're going to roll the other way okay you're going to block him now okay here we go ready? come on come on here we go ready go come on, come on. control 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 there you go that's good that's good that's good excellent okay okay now what they're keying here is they're keying the flow of the ball but they're also keying these guards so the guards are coming straight out they're getting full flow the guards are telling them where the play is going if one of them were to pull in the direction of the flow that would even help them okay okay come on back one more time okay one more step one more step block inside block that dummy Okay, here we go. Ready? Come on. Here we go. Okay. Ready? Go! That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. Now, keep tight to this thing. Now, same deal. You still scrape to the outside. He's going to close inside right here. Okay. He's going to get his butt into the hole here and control this thing, looking for the fullback or looking for a pulling guard to block you. Okay? So that's what you're looking for you're still scraping the outside because we're thinking bounce off let's say they were running a counter trade where they're pulling this guy here and they're pulling the tackle here okay if they were to do that you'd close inside and as soon as you see this thing coming you're going to come and try to take out the lead blocker so you're coming right down here with your inside shoulder and you're taking on this lead blocker and you're trying to take out two guys now that means that the hole's going to be closed up and what we got is a bounce off now okay so what you got is the bounce off runner okay you got the inside you become the alley player now coming down okay we're assuming now that it's a two back formation okay come on back okay 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 now I want you to pull this way okay 
I want you to take one step and I want you to release. Okay? There you go. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Block down. Block down. Okay, ready? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Okay. Remember your key in the guards. Ready? Go! Okay. Now, what would that tell you? What's going on here? What's going on? What did he do? That's right. This guard pulled, didn't he? Okay. What did your guy do? He blocked down. So what does that tell you that's going on? Some sort of a counter is going on, okay? So when this guard pulls, okay, this is going to take precedence over everything that I do. Okay, I just lied to you. I went this way, which showed you ball flow going this way, but actually we were running a counter tray back here, okay? So what should you have done? Should have came down. You've got to bounce off. Let's do it right this time. Okay, here we go. Let's do the same thing, same thing. Okay, ready, go! That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Now, when you get down, okay, you're gonna be in a lot of traffic down here, so you're coming down, okay, come down, and now shuffle down, keep an inside position on the ball carrier, even though there isn't a ball carrier, okay? <laughs> okay, come on back, come on back, come on back. Okay, okay, let's do it the other way, okay? This time you release, okay, you release, you pull that way, you take one step. Okay, here we go. Ready? There you go. Ready? Go! Okay, good, 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 good. That's it. You want to keep him. You want to keep him and funnel him into the inside here. You guys reacted excellently. Okay, good job. Come on back. Come on back. Now, if I were to come, this is a drill we do every day. You guys picked it up real well as far as reading the guards and doing everything correctly. Now, if I were to come straight down the, uh, down the line, like with a speed option or a lead option, whatever it might be, you would have pitch, okay? The end would have quarterback, and you'd help on the quarterback, okay? We'd also have a two-back formation of free safety giving us support, okay? So we'd do this, okay? Now, if I were to come this way, okay, and he were to block down, what you would have is the quarterback, okay? And when you tackle the quarterback, you want to tackle his, this, his pitch arm, okay, right here, because he's going to pitch the ball down here. So you want to go right for this shoulder right here, and what you'd have is the pitch, okay? Now, if it's a two-back formation, you'd have, probably have a lead on you. If it's an ace-back formation, you wouldn't. You'd have a free shot at this guy, okay? Okay, let's do that. Okay, let's go strong this time. So you're going to block inside, okay? You're just going to take one step, one step. Okay, ready? Here we go. Here we go. Ready? Go! We got, we got, yeah. You, you come and get him right. Now, you're going to come right to this pitch guy. So you're going to really scrape hard. You got the pitch guy all the way. Boom. Okay? You're going to come right here and you're going to hit this quarterback. Okay? You're just going to knock the hell out of this quarterback. We're not going to feather him. Okay? We're not going to be nice to him. We're going to make it an ugly day for him. Okay? Come on back. Oh, let's do it. Well, let's do it. Let's do it correctly this time here. So we get a good scrape, we get a good hit on the quarterback, okay? Ready? Go! Come on, come on, that's it, good, good. That's exactly what we want there. I'm going to take him right out of the picture. Okay, let's go the other way and get a release here. One step, one step, and release. Ready? There you go. Okay, ready? Go! There you go, come on. That's it, that's it, that's it. Good, good. Make sure we got that coverage back there because they can always come back and throw that thing. Okay. Okay. Now let's see if we can get this thing. Okay. Now we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna play a little game here and see. You got two things. You got full flow, you got the counter tray, and you got the option. Let's see how well we can do this. Okay? Just do a couple plays here. Okay, you pull this way, you take one step and block inside. Here we go. Ready? There we go. See if we can get this. Ready? Go! That's it. That's it. That's it. Good. 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 We had a little hesitation, but that was good. Okay? Some linebackers, when we first started with this, we'd have to give a little shuffle here. So we get a shuffle, and then we come back downhill. But eventually, our linebackers told me, we don't need a shuffle anymore. We can just run downhill because we can see these guards. Okay? And we can get this. Okay? Come on back. Come on back. Come on back. Okay? Okay.
Let's go full flow. Okay, and a few block inside. Okay, and just one step, one step. Ready? Ready? Go! What you got? What you? No, 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 no. You're gonna stay right there. He's got contained. Okay, so you're gonna close here. Get your butt into the hole right here. Close this thing as tight as you can. Force it to go outside to the bounce off linebacker here. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Here we go. There we go. Okay, give me a good release, give me a good release, okay. One step, one step, ready? There we go. Okay, there we go. Ready, go! Okay, okay, we kinda messed that up, okay. It's supposed to be one step, one step, okay. <laughs> Let's do it one more time here. Let's do it one more time. Ready, go! Okay, now, what do you got? You got contain, okay. He's got whatever happens in here. If he takes a step forward, okay, we got the end here. Who's going to play this C gap here? You got the contain, okay? So you're going to come to the outside, okay? Let's go back. Okay, block inside. One step, one step. And the option. Ready? Here we go, here we go. Ready? Go! That's it, that's it. Good, good, good. Now, what you got? You got the pitch, man. That's right. So you're going to. You're gonna go 100 miles an hour, that guy. Knock the heck out of that guy, okay? Which shoulder do you want to take? You want to take my pitch arm, okay? Because that's the one that's probably gonna make me throw it in the dirt. Okay, come on back. Okay, okay. okay. Pull to this direction, take one step, you release. Oh, sorry, block down, block down. Ready? There we go, here we go, there we go. There you go. Ready? Go! <laughs> oh, we lost it, didn't we? We lost, yeah, okay, you took flow here, you saw your guard pull, guard takes precedence over anything I do, okay, good, 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 okay, come on back, come on back, okay, let's see if we can fool the other guy, okay, you go this way, you take one step, and let's see if you can release, here we go, ready, ready, go, <laughs> okay, what you got, what you got, what you got, that's right, okay, now, he pulled, didn't he? So what you got? What's the play? Uh, I came down here. That's right. It's counter tray down here, okay? So you're going to come down in here, okay? What we just did was go through a drill that the linebackers go through each day to help their reads. Guards take preference over everything that happens in the backfield. Basically what it was is the two-back read. We just went through this. Now, what we're going to go through now is basically the stagger that occurs between the free safety and the whip linebacker and what how we're going to defend an ace back formation. Now we're talking about a spread formation with four wide receivers here. Anytime we get this we've got to have a stagger between these two guys here. The ball is in the middle of the field right now which means that I'll be the quarterback back here right here this is going to be the ace back okay on a shotgun formation We've got a stagger here because we've got to have the same relationship we had with a two back, but now we're having it a little bit differently. So when we get in this situation, the whip linebacker is going to go to the side of the running back. Okay? The free safety is going to go right to the middle of the formation. Okay? Which you're going to play about seven, eight yards deep, right about here. You're still the free safety. You're still going to help on pass, okay? because we've got probably two, a wide out here and a wide out over there if it's a 22 formation or it might be a 13 or 31 formation where we have a trips, okay? And they're gonna funnel guys into you and help you, okay? So your job is to help them over the top. Now, basically it's the same thing. Now you become involved in reading the guards when we do this ace back drill, okay? So you got the same thing. If we get full flow over here with the option, for example, what do you have? You got the pitch. The end has got the quarterback and you've got the alley, okay? If the running back were to be over here, okay, on this side, you go to that side, now you can move over a little bit, okay? Just a little bit there. Now, you're a good enough athlete here that you can give me some real good support if we get that counter tray. So your job would be to come up on that guards here, okay? Basically, when we see this formation, 
we're concerned about two things immediately. And this is what we want to talk about when we come to the line of scrimmage. We're concerned about the speed option over here. So if I come over here and you come over here, okay, he becomes a pitch man, that's your man, okay? You're going to come downhill, you're going to be the alley guy, okay? You've got the pitch. We still got the end on the quarterback. We have also got the two flex guys in here that'll help on the quarterback, okay? Come on back, okay? The other thing is, when we're in this formation, this guard pulls over here, okay? You're pulling over here, okay? We're crawling, go ahead, pull, 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 pull. We're running counter tray, okay? Now, counter tray will come right in here. Our end is instructed to come down the line of scrimmage and take out the first guy. If he takes out the first guy, he'll take out the second guy also, which means all we have is a bounce off player. He's got to run to the outside. He's got the bounce off. So what you got is the bounce off player. You're coming downhill in case anything happens in here and he gets some sort of a cutback. So you become the alley player. You become the bounce off player. Now, come on back. Sometimes they'll do, no, the guard's still up there. Sometimes, especially in our district here in uh, El Paso, we see a lot of the quarterback counter tray, okay, where they'll fake this way and this guard will pull, okay? This guard will pull right here. He'll, he'll block down in, no, just block down, block down. Now, you become the bounce off player, you become the downhill alley player, okay? So that's something we talk about over here all the time. When we get up to, let's go back to the line of scrimmage. Okay, the running back is over here. You guys should be talking, okay? You know that, okay, if we get counter trade to this side, that you're the bounce off player. If we get counter trade to this side, you're the bounce off player, okay? You'll always have pitch on the option. So you know that. So you guys are gonna be communicating. Watch pitch, watch pitch, okay, to this guy here, okay? But you both have to watch for the counter trade because those are the two plays that are probably most dangerous from this thing other than the passing game. And if they do pass, you've got this guy man to man, you're free. Okay, any questions, we okay? Can we run a few plays here? Be okay? Come on back, come on back. Okay, let's take one step, one step. Okay, we're gonna run speed option uh, over to this side, so you're gonna be on this side here. Okay, here we go, ready? There we go. Okay, okay back a little bit, okay? You know how to do this bubble back? You do that? Yeah, okay, here we go. There we go. Just a little bit deeper. Give me a little. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Okay, ready? Go! That's it. That's it. That's it. Good. 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 That's exactly what we want. We want the downhill alley player. We want the pitch right there. Excellent. Okay. Okay, let's get on this side. Okay. We're going to run a quarterback counter trade. You're the left guard, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to pull this way. You're just going to block the inside guy, the, the, the down dummy. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, so we're going to run a counter trade. I'm going to fake to you and I'm going to keep the ball. Here you go. Ready? Okay. Okay. Ready? Go! That's it. That's it. Now, who you got? You got the bounce off. You got the bounce off, okay? You got the bounce off coming this way. Okay, coming downhill. Okay? So you got the alley. Let's, let's, let's go through this. Okay, because we know what the play is now. Let's go through it so we know exactly how, what we're doing here. This is a quarterback counter tray. Ready? Go! Okay, okay. Bounce off. Yeah, you got the bounce off, okay? Because if he does his job, the end does his job, and he takes out these two pulling linemen, okay, the, this guy's got no place to go but to the outside, okay? So you want to make sure that you contain him. You're coming down, make sure we've got this thing taken care of that way, okay? Let's run the counter tray the other way. You block the in, oh no, you block the inside dummy. I'm sorry. You pull that way, okay? And I'm gonna give you the ball. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Ready? Good job. Good job. Okay. Ready? Go. Okay. Good. Good. Go. Oh, you see it? See it? See it? See it? See it? See it? Okay. Okay. Exactly. Okay. We should have been downhill. You had the exact good read there. Everything was fine. We should have been downhill playing inside out on that deal. Okay? Okay, come on back. Come on back. Come on back. Okay. Huh? <laughs> Sorry about that, man. <laughs> Can't help you there. <laughs> okay, let's go one step, one step, and let's run speed option over here. Okay, ready? 
Here you go. Here you go. Ready? Go! Good, 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 good. good. Okay, any questions on that? That's basically how we stopped uh, the, the, the spread, okay? All the other stuff that goes inside, the inside traps, the leads and all that stuff, we're taking care of with this. But you two guys are the vital guys, the free safety and the linebacker on this, this spread offense. Next, we're going to go into the defensive back play for cover one. And most of what we're going to talk about, I learned from a guy named Tony Lukens when I was working at Andrus High School. Tony had a career in the NFL for a short time. He also had a long career in the Arena League. He taught me a lot of things that are very different about uh, covering loose man coverage for cover one. So basically we're going to talk about these techniques. Okay, we're going to play and it depends upon the DB and it also depends upon the field. Okay, for example, these hash marks are true to almost all high schools, but in Texas we play with college hash marks. So we've got a, a, a different dimension of the field. Our hash marks are moved in on both sides. You guys divide it actually into thirds. So we've got a little bit of different field. We play the same as they do in the colleges. So let's say the ball is in the middle of the field here and the receiver is like three or four yards outside the hash. So move out just a little bit and the quarterback is right here. Now. He may run out routes, he may run in routes. So we've got to play it pretty, pretty much to the, close to the vest here. We're going to be just slightly inside him, about seven yards deep, okay? We're going to have, come on over, okay, okay. I'll use the demonstration, you can just kind of step back. Okay, we're going to have our inside foot back, okay? I'm sorry, our inside foot back, our outside foot up, okay? We're going to kind of bend a little bit here at the hips. We're going to have our hands loosely hanging. Now, what we're going to key here is the quarterback because on the first three things you do are shuffle steps, three-step shuffle. And you're going to read the quarterback, and he's going to give you a key as to what's going on. Okay? Now, I always do this with my DBs, and I'll do it with you two guys. I got a $20 bill. Okay, and I'm going to give it to either one of you that can give me the right answer. What is the significance of three, five, and seven? Drop steps. Drop steps. Okay, those are the steps that the quarterback is going to take. Okay, now I'm going to go a little further. If the quarterback takes a three step drop, okay, what are the routes that you've got to defend? The out, the quick out, which is going to be about how deep? It should be about five to seven. In the NFL, they may go as far as deep as seven. Probably in high school, it'd be five or six, depending on the receiver, how fast he is. You know, you're the first guy that ever got $20 from me. All the guys in, in Texas, they don't know what the hell we're talking about. <laughs> Good job. Okay, but yeah, we're talking about an out. What else are we talking about? Uh, quick slant. Quick slant. Good. Okay, when's he going to break it off? Yeah, okay, about three to five, okay, which probably is it's probably third or fourth step. He's going to break it to the inside. Okay, what's the other one? For the three-step drop. Bubble, yeah, okay. That's usually a one step. They usually just throw it right now. What else might it be? Might be a hitch or it might be a fade. Okay, what's the other thing we got to think about on a three-step drop? The pluses. Okay, the pluses, for example, the out and up. Okay, the hitch and go. Okay, usually with the slant, you know, they'll, they'll slant in and whip out, something like that. Okay, but that's what we got to be concerned with, the pluses. Okay, so that's what we're looking at on our three-step shuffle. We're looking to see whether the quarterback is taking three steps. Okay, what are some clues that'll help you as far as when I'm dropping back to know that it's a three-step drop besides counting steps? He might, okay, if he's, not, if he's not coached real well, he may be patting the ball a little bit, but you can also tell by this quarterback, his first step would be a nice long step, second step he kind of shortens it, and he may drop his shoulder a little bit. 
for that third step, okay? And he should throw it. And when he throws it, the receiver shouldn't see the ball in the air, okay? Until he turns, the ball will be in the air. Now he's going to catch the ball and get upfield, okay? Whether it's an out or whatever it is. So that's what you're reading. Now, if it's a five-step drop, you're going to go into your back pedal. So you're taking three shuffle steps, okay? Three shuffle steps, and then you're going to go into your back pedal, okay? If he continues down the line. If, if he comes down the line, okay, you know it's run. Now you can help. Now, what we don't want to do is let our DBs get run off on running plays. So if the ball's on the line of scrimmage, and you especially see a low hat with the lineman, okay, because you're reading the quarterback through the uncovered lineman here, which would be the offensive tackle in our, our scheme, okay, so you're seeing this, and you see that we've got a low hat, okay, the ball's on the line of scrimmage, now you're going to throttle down, you're going to jam this guy, and help on the run, because we don't want to end up playing only eight man defending the run, we want all 11 on the run, we don't want just the eight. Okay, so right now we're going to do our three-step shuffle, okay? So we're going to push off our front step, our front foot, and shuffle three steps, and then we're going to go into a back pedal. Okay, have you ever done this? Yeah, uh, shuffle. Right. Shuffle, no, it's back, straight back, looking at it right here, okay? And then go into your back pedal, okay? Here we go, okay? Let's go, we'll go one at a time here. This, this, uh, what's your name? Joe's going to go first, and Aaron's going to go next, okay? So here we go. Just three-step shovel and then a little back pedal. Here you go. Ready? Go! No, no, no. Shovel. Shovel, 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 shovel. Just shovel. Shovel back. Shovel back, and then go into your back pedal, okay? Should we stay low in our shuffle? Yes. Stay low in your shovel. Stay low in your back pedal. Don't, don't stand up in your back pedal. Why don't we want to stand up in our back pedal? That's right. The other thing is you got to stop. You got to break on the routes, and if you're back up here, you got to get back down. Okay, so we want to be down here so we can plant, come back on our on our routes here. Okay, three-step shovel. Ready? Go. Okay. Okay, but let's shovel with our front foot always always in the front. Yes. Okay. Shovel with the front foot. This is a little bit. Dead. There you go. That's good. Try to keep your feet a little closer together. Okay. Here we go. Ready? Go. Shovel, shovel, shovel. Then in the back pedal. Okay. I think Aaron, you got it pretty good here. Here we go. Ready? Go. Shovel, 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 shovel. Now back pedal, back pedal, back. And just get a straight back pedal, okay? Because you got it man to man, okay? One more time. Try to get a little shovel. Okay, push off the front. Keep that back foot back. Here we go. And you're looking inside. Ready? Go. That's it. And then in the back pedal, okay? Shovel, shovel, back pedal. Ready? Go. Shovel, 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 back pedal, back pedal, back pedal. Good. Good, good. Okay? Now. What we're going to do, okay, is I'm going to put you right over here as the receiver, and we're going to do one at a time, okay? I'm going to put him right here. We're going to run a quick out, okay? Now, we may run the quick out, and we may run a deeper pattern, a five-step drop. So what you're going to do is shuffle. You're going to look inside, okay, and you're going to see whether you got a break to this or whether you got to uh, continue in your back pedal for a deeper route for a five-step drop, okay? Now, let's, let's talk about something else, okay? You're going to still line up here as though, you know, he was back there, okay? Now, let's talk about his catch hand. Which hand can he catch the ball with? One-handed. This hand only. This is the only hand he can catch you with. Okay, we talk a lot about our catch hand, okay, because this is the one you want to take away when you're going with the out. So if he's going to the out, this is the one we want to take down and we want to tackle right in here. So that's what we want to do on the out is to take away his catch hand, okay. It also, if we're taking the catch hand, he's going to have a heck of a time trying to get the out and up because we've taken away his outside, haven't we? So we're in a good position to take away his go route. Okay, on the down and out and up. Okay, now if he runs a quick slant on you, which is his catch hand, it'd be this one right here. This is the one he can catch it with. 
So this is the hand we want to strip. So as he's coming down, we want to strip this one. We want to wrap here. Okay? Okay. How about a hitch? He turns on the hitch. Where's his catch hand? Both of them, okay? Which one do we more concerned with? The outside or inside? The outside. Let's go with the outside because the one that they like the most is the catch and then take it up the field, huh? Hitch and go, okay? So we want to take this one here, okay, strip it. Some guys can go over the top with both, okay? Some guys can punch and strip, okay? But somehow we got to make sure we secure the tackle too, okay? Okay, so we're going to just do the out right now. We're just going to go to the catch hand for the out. We're going to wrap. We're not going to do it real hard, okay? But you're just going to read me, okay? Here we go. You're going to shuffle. Yeah, you're going to use your three-step shuffle, okay? And then you're going to break on it, or you're going to go in your back pedal. No, start right there, okay? Right there, okay? This will give you a good idea as far as where you need to be. Okay, ready, go. Okay, no, 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 just stay, just stay, I'm sorry. Okay, just just stay there, okay, he's gonna come down because we wanna give him the, the, the location, what, where, where he's gonna be, as far as where you're gonna be and what, where his relationship has gotta be here. Okay, we ready? Okay, go. Okay, good, 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 good. Wrap, wrap with that other one, okay? Wrap with that other one, because he can't catch the ball this way, okay? He's got to catch it here, so we're going to come down real hard, wrap real hard right in here, and take him out of the picture, okay? Hopefully strip the ball out, okay? Okay, Aaron, you want to give it a shot? Okay. Remember, get your, get your shovel, get your shovel, get your shovel. Here we go. Ready? Go! No, 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 no. How many steps I take? I need my $20 back, man. I went five. Okay, here we go. Again, 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 again. Okay, ready? Go! Break, 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 break. Okay, come down. Come down hard on that catch hand. Come down hard, because he's going to be out here like this. Boom! We're going to jam that thing. Okay? Okay, here we go. Ready? Go! What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? How many steps I take? Five. We've got to go into the back pedal. Okay. These are skills that we got to drill on every day, every day, every day. Three-step shuffle because a lot of man-to-man -man teams, and this is a man-to-man -man coverage, a lot of man-to-man -man teams allow the wide receiver to run off the DBs. We don't want that to happen. We think that we can be good enough on our three-step shuffle to take away this quick passing game. Okay, we also believe that we can help support the run. Okay, so this is, this is something we have to work on every day. Shovel, 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 back pedal, shovel, shovel, break on the three step, whatever it is. Okay, and then uh, and go from there. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about the fade route. Okay, a little bit about the fade. Okay, come on up in here. Okay. We're going to run it. We're actually going to run a fade now. So uh, we're going to need some uh, help over here. Okay, with guys running the fade here. Okay, when he, when he, we're talking now. We've gone into our back pedal because we recognize we've done our three-step shuffles. Okay, and we recognize now that the pass is a fade. Okay, he's broken our cushion. He's trying to fade to the outside. We've got to turn. We've got to turn our hips now. We want him to be a little bit ahead of us. Why? Huh? No. We want him a little bit ahead of us, okay, so that now we know it's a fade. Because if he tries to do something else, okay, for example, cross our face, okay, we can stop him with this hand, okay, in the chest. I'm sorry, I went that high, okay. But, see, we can stop him from getting across our face here. Okay, if we're even with him, okay, he can always throttle down and sneak behind us and we'll run ourselves out of the picture. So we want to be on his back hip, but we want to be right here. Okay, if we're not right here, okay, can we look back? No, 
If we're over here, we can't look back. Okay? But if we're here, okay, now when we get to that point, usually it's about 28 yards, okay, where they're going to throw the ball, okay, now we can get a peak too and maybe get a pick. Okay? But again, okay, we're not going to look until we know he's going to look. Because if he's not looking, then we're not looking either. Okay? But we got to have this, 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 this uh, relationship here with the hand on the hip. Some guys even go down lower on the, the, lower, the upper thigh. Try to get down there. Keep that contact. Because once you lose contact with that, okay, you're in trouble. Okay, so what we want to do now is we're going to let him run a fade. We're going to give you a bad situation where you got to turn your hips and you got to go with him. And I want you to get the hand on the hip here and see if you can run on the back side here. Okay? So if we could just back off because he's going to run the fade this way here. Okay, we got it. You'll be next, and we'll get another receiver in here to run the fade. Okay, we're going to run the fade here. No, just just right from here. Yeah, you can backpedal if you want. Okay, but right from here because you're going to have to turn your hips eventually. Here we go. Ready? Go. Turn, 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 turn. Get on that hip. Get it. That's good. That's good. Stay on the back. Okay. Now you don't want to look till he peeks over. When he peeks over, now you can peek over too. Okay. That's going to help you get the the pick. But if you lose him. The main thing is you got to catch up. Okay, let's get two more. Two more, two more, two more, two more, two more. Wide receiver here, okay, and a DB. We're putting you in the worst scenario we possibly can, where you're in his face here, and he's running the fade on you, okay? So you're doing your back pedal? You're doing your, yeah, you, you, you can, yeah, you can do your back pedal, but you got to turn, okay, when you start to lose it, when you start to lose that cushion. Three to four yards, you got to you got to turn. Yes, yes, you're going to be in here, you're going to turn, come on, come on, come on, turn right in here, right on this hip, okay? With that right hand, you're going to put it on the hip. Here we go, ready? Go! Turn, 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 okay, 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 now, 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 no, no. see how, how quickly you got to close on that? Okay, let's do it again, let's do it again, okay? See, you want to be as tight to him as you can, okay, because you're mirroring his movements as he's coming down here. You're mirroring his movements, and as he starts to, he starts to get in here, come on, come on, come on, it's going to be right in here, right in here. Okay. Okay, there we go, here we go. Ready, go! Turn, 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 turn. Get down the hip, get on the hip, get on the hip. Yeah, good, 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 good. Now, when he turns to look for the ball, you can also get a peek if you got that hip. But if you lost that hip, you know, you see it on television all the time in the NFL. The guy loses the hip, okay, he looks back and the guy catches it over here on that fade. Because he's trying to fade away from you, he's trying to fade away from the quarterback, okay? Okay, we get another one, another one, another one, another one, another one. Okay, one more, one more, one more. Okay, Aaron, come on, come on, another DB, another, another, yeah. Okay, okay, you guys got union scale here, I don't wanna, you know, <laughs> here we go. Okay, ready, go! Turn, 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 get on, okay, okay, okay. Now what do we do wrong? Huh? You peek back early, what else? Yeah, that's right. You weren't behind him. You got ahead of him, and he could have snuck behind you on an in a dig route. Okay. He's a little bit slow. He's a little bit slow. Okay. Okay. Huh? No. 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 No juking. No juking. No juking. Here we go. One more time. Ready? Go. Turn. 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 Okay. Now, what'd you do wrong that time? Huh? No, you're okay on that. What we did is we got that little peak there. We got peak. We got a little greedy there. We were looking back. He wasn't looking back. He ain't gonna catch yeah. the ball. He looks back. Okay. So if he doesn't look back, I just. That's right. That's right. Okay. Now we're gonna go to a different technique because sometimes we use jam technique. Okay, where we actually get in his face, bump and run, man to man. Hopefully you're gonna get some help over the top. But I have had some DBs that didn't need help over the top. They could play this guy man to man. The whole technique here. Okay, come on up on the line. Okay, the whole technique is to split his stance here, get down a little bit right down here, okay, get down. Now you're going to concentrate on the base of his numbers to his hip, okay. Now you're going to get your, that's right, you're going to get your hands right there in front of you, okay. Now which hand are you going to jam with? Is it man? It's man to man. That's right, okay. Now any move into the inside, you're going to shuffle with it. And you're going to jam. We're not going to use this hand. We don't want to use this hand. Okay? So we want to jam right in here. Okay? Jamming right here. Okay? He tries to go inside. We're going to shuffle with him. 
right down the line, okay, and prevent him from getting that inside release. If he goes to the outside, it's okay to get beat a little bit, okay, because you want to be on the back hip, okay. If you get even with him, he's going to be leaving. You don't want that to happen, okay. All I want you to do is run a fade here. Oh, okay. No inside release, okay. So you're going to jam, you're going to get on the backside hip, and you're going to go with him. Here we go. Just run the fade, yes sir. Here we go, get your hands up, that's right, okay. Why don't we want our hands down? That's right, okay, if we're in a fight, I want to have my hands up here, I don't want to be down here, unless I'm Muhammad Ali. Okay, here we go. Okay, get your elbows in just a little bit, there you go, there you go. And you're really gonna give a nice punch here, but you're not gonna overextend here. So we're gonna hit right in here, we're gonna run the fade, here we go, ready, go. That's it, that's it, get on the back hip, get on the back hip. Good, 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 good. Not bad. Two more, two more, two more. Two more. Another guy, another guy, another guy. Good job. Okay. Okay. You're going to jam him. Yes, sir. Okay. Splitting inside right in here. Hands up right in here. Jam in here. But he's only going to run the fade on you. Yeah. Get your feet even. Get your feet parallel. A little tighter. Okay. You want them a little tighter there. Okay. You want your hands up. Okay. Here we go, ready, go. Run the fade, run the fade, run the fade, okay. Now, we don't want to jam, we don't want to get our outside arm pinned, we just want to jam with this one arm. Some coaches actually teach it, okay, and they'll have you put your hand behind your back. So the only thing you're gonna jam is that inside release. They're not gonna let you do it the other way. Okay, one more time, one more time. Just jam with that right arm. Get your hands up, get your hands up, get your hands up, both hands up, okay. But we're only going to use this right one to punch. The other one we're just going to have there, okay, to, as far as making an interception or whatever. Here you go, ready, go. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, okay. Okay, now, what are we concentrating on again? Hips, base of the numbers, right, okay. Now, get a little bit lower jam. Okay, come on back, the first two we had, First two, first two, first two, first two. Okay, you come, you come. Okay, now we're going to jam the inside release. Okay, and what we want to do is make sure that we got this, this foot here. We don't want to open the gate and give it to them. Okay, so as we jam, we want to make sure we shuffle in here, okay, and prevent the inside release. So we don't want to open that gate and let them get that free release on you. Okay. No, open, open right in here, okay. Here we go. We're going to get it, huh? Inside release, inside release. Just move just a little bit more inside, inside. Just, yeah, there you go, there you go. You just, just try to get inside release. Here we go, ready? Go! Jam, 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 jam. Good, good, good. Now he doesn't have a route. You've taken away his route. Come on back. Okay. Now, let's see how good we've got this now. You can do whatever you want. You can get inside or you run the fade. Okay. Here we go. Ready? Go! Ah! What did we do wrong? Opened up. Okay, we crossed our feet too. We didn't get much of a jam on it. Remember, it doesn't matter whether he beats you to the outside, as long as you stay and get down to that back hip, catch up. One more time here. Whatever you want. Whatever you want. You got it. Ready? Go! That's it. That's it. Stay on it. Stay on it. Stay on it. Stay on it. Good! Good! Good, you didn't peek until he peeked, and you had control of the hip, so we had a good job. Okay. Okay, that basically wraps up what we want to cover today as far as the secondary and the linebacker play. One of the most valuable lessons I learned as a defensive coordinator is that it's not a good idea to send, for example, the coach who's coaching the mic, the Ted and the nose or whatever his responsibility is down and say, okay, work on fundamentals. Give him a specific thing to work on. Now, for example, I've got four blocking schemes up on the board here. Maybe this particular day, this is what we want to work on. We want to work on a strong zone. We want to work on a weak zone. We want to work on a, a strong counter tray in C-gap counter tray and a weak side C-gap counter tray. So these are the specific skills that we expect our position coaches to be working on. And 
we will get together. Then they'll have an individual time to work on these things. And then when we get together, I'll have these drawn on cards and I'll show a scout team these cards. And usually I'm the one who does the quarterbacking here. And I get a good picture as to whether or not we've actually mastered the techniques for playing each of these blocking schemes. Because this is the main thing in football. You know, a lot of times I, I jog at the park and I see Pop Warner coaches yelling at these little kids, you know, to be tough and to do this and do that. But the main thing is we've got to teach them the exact techniques they need for the various blocking schemes. Now, we do the same thing with our secondary coaches because if today we're going to work on the, uh, we'll start individually, for example, like with a three-step drop. We'll start with the out. Maybe then we'll go to the hitch. Maybe then the next slant or the fade or whatever order we want to go in. But we work on one skill at a time so that when we go into our one-on-one -on -one or our seven-on-seven, -seven, that's the skill we're working on. Now, later in the season, obviously, we've progressed into five-step drops and maybe even seven-step drops if we see that. But... They have a specific skill that they're working on, a specific thing that they're trying to teach their players because that's what coaching is. Coaching is teaching. So we want to make sure that we know exactly what skills we want to teach, in what order we want to teach them because the, you know this is the things we've got to stop during the season and we're doing it in an organized progression. Okay, in our first play here, <clears throat> we're looking at the secondary and we're looking at the, uh, the linebackers here. This is Moto, our base defense, and we're looking at Rover. This against 20 personnel. We got Monat. We're checking out the cornerback play on this. Does an excellent job covering that guy, and a free safety comes across, does a good job backing him up over the top, making the interception. Now we get 11 personnel, gun, we got toe me, and again we're looking at the cornerback. Comes up, doesn't make an interception, but makes a good hit on the, the receiver. 11 personnel, gun, okay. We're going to see the wheel down here, and we're going to see a good switch between these two players. Okay, we're going to see trips formation. We're going to see a good adjustment to trips, the way we want to adjust properly to trips. We should see a big hit here. This is 11 gun. We got a good switch when they're trying to pick us here, and we end up with a big hit also. This play is the interception. It's a passing down against 10 gun, and we're going to come up with an interception by the free safety who's playing a lot deeper because this is an obvious passing situation. This is Monat, 21 gun, okay, interception by the free safety. Next play is another interception by our stud. Okay, and this is Monad against 21 gun. This 
This is Moto, our base defense, and we're going to see a good scrape by this linebacker. Stop the play. That's where we want him to scrape. It's Moto, okay, fist, and again, we're looking at the linebacker for a good scrape out of this. Okay, this is uh, Moto against the tray. Our end's gonna run a little bit for too far off field, but yet we still get good feel and good uh, penetration stop to play. Okay, we're gonna see a good speed turn by the DB on this. This is against 10 personnel trips. Good speed turn there and got around and uh, knocked the ball loose. Look at this 10 personnel and we're looking to see the cornerback play on this pass. We're going against 10 personnel and we're looking at the play of the cornerback on this play. Moto, Wham, okay, and again, we're looking at the cornerback against 10 personnel. Puts good pressure here, and we get a nice play. We should have 20 personnel. This is 20 personnel. We got Moto, and we're looking at the linebacker to make a good scrape off on the play. Twenty personnel. We got T Nam. Okay, we should get a nice, good hit on the slant pattern up here. This receiver coming in. It's Twenty-one personnel, and we're looking at the free safety to make a good fill on a running play. Twenty one personnel again and, and watch the play of the cornerback. Staying right with the receiver on the backside hip, looks back when the receiver does and makes a good play. Okay, we're looking for Monat up front in the play again of the cornerback. Cuts him off and causes the quarterback to throw the ball out of bounds. Hopefully, the on field demonstration and the PowerPoints have given you all the information you need to develop sound linebacking and secondary play. I thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Hopefully, it's going to help you greatly in this coming season, and good luck.